everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we've got a Ferguson to work on. This isn't my Ferguson, this belongs to my friend Gord. Um, this is a 1948 TE20, or is it a 49? It's a TE20 anyway, I know that much. Uh, it was here about a year ago, it just it just got, it was terrible, it, it wouldn't even start, it, 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 was, it was messed up. But we got it fixed up. I'll put a link in the description box below to, to that video. Um, anyway, it's acting up again now. At least now it'll start, but it runs really rough and it fouls the plugs and you can't keep it going. So we're gonna have a look at it and see what we can find out. First thing is the simplest thing. Gas smells okay. And uh, we'll use Gord's uh, dipstick here. And you can see there's plenty of gas in it, at least for our purpose. A lot of things could cause this thing to run, like it runs rich, I had it running, it, it was it was spitting um, black smoke out the exhaust and, and going pop, 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 pop. There's so many things that could cause that. It could be the air being choked off a little bit and it's pulling too much fuel. Could be a problem with the carburetor, could be a problem with the ignition. We're gonna check all that stuff and uh, we'll figure this out. These things have an oil bath air cleaner in them. And that doesn't look like it's been serviced in a long time. There's a lot of crud in that. What also happens to these is uh, it's got like a steel wool packing up in here. And that can get plugged up with crap over time. There should be something in here under this cap too. Yeah, so there's... You can see there, there's the, the first line of defense. It's got a little bit of an inlet screen. And you can see there, that is all packed with junk. So we'll get this all cleaned up. I'm not saying that's the problem, but it's not helping. So the intake air, it goes through the louvers in that cap, down through there. There's a little pipe here. It, it pulls the air. It gurgles through this oil here, which, which grabs all the dust and crap out of it. Oil bath is absolutely the most efficient air cleaner there is. And then it goes up through the um, up through the steel wool packing and then out down through this into the carburetor. This here, I don't know why that is open. That, I think, is because that is probably an air cleaner from a TEA, not a TE. Another thing I don't like is this tractor should have a solid rod for the choke and this has got this cable and I could kind of feel there that I don't think the choke is going all the way off. It's not. Okay. What I'm going to do right now is drop the carburetor off it. Number one because the, the rubber hoses on this air intake pipe are so hard you can usually kind of jiggle it and get the thing out of there with the carburetor in place, but not on this way. No way, Jose. So we'll just do it this way. We'll pull the carburetor down, get it off of there. And I want to investigate this choke linkage. See what I can do about replacing this cable with a solid uh, rod. So here is the, uh, the little cotter pin for the throttle linkage and now you can see here this uh, cobbled up cable for the for the choke I don't know why it doesn't have a solid rod anymore but it's going to have a solid rod This is a mess. This hunk of hose here is all, it, it's just from trying to get it back on. So we'll see if we've got a couple of pieces of hoses. We can replace those. And I'm going to get this air cleaner right off of here. And we'll see about cleaning it out. And this, I am so fortunate because Gord's tractor is over here. My toolbox is way over there. So Deb has agreed to let me use her tools for this job. So long as I don't get them dirty. It doesn't really look that bad. There's a little bit of crap in there, but I've seen them a lot worse. 
We're gonna get rid of this choke cable. I don't know again if this is the problem, but it's definitely not right. It, it, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that the choke was fully going off. We'll get this out of here. Not the prettiest thing. Another thing I'll try to fix up when I'm in here is the, the throttle. It, it, the friction disc for the throttle is, is wiped out and it doesn't stay where you, where you put it. So we'll take this apart and see if I've got a friction disc kicking around and we'll replace that for him while we're in there. Here's another uh, two problems I found. Uh, the first problem is that uh, I noticed it was hard to start when it was cold. You had to crank it a lot, and one time you actually had to shoot some quick start in it. Well, the little door, um, if you can see, there's a half moon-shaped hole in the choke plate. There's supposed to be a little spring-loaded valve in there so that uh, when you're holding it, it acts kind of like the choke pull-off in a car. When the engine first coughs to life, it sucks air through that. It the, the, the vacuum pulls that little valve off its seat and allows that half moon shaped hole open to let some air through. So if you don't release the choke fast enough, um, it doesn't drown the engine with fuel. That's all missing. I'll have to look around here, see if I've got some of that stuff I can, uh, I can put in there. Also, what I noticed, um, this here, this little pin is the stopper for the choke when it's open. And you can see it lets the choke go all the way past center and start closing again. That there is open, and it's letting it go go to there. That is going to disrupt the airflow through the carburetor and possibly make this thing run fat. So we're going to see if we could straighten this little pin out and, uh, and get that fixed up. But I think first what I'll do is try to get this uh, choke plate fixed up with the right little um, little valve. So you can see here, I've got a proper choke butterfly and I can install that in. So what happens, you can see there, when the engine first butters to life, it pulls that valve off that little seat there and lets it get some fresh air so it doesn't uh, end up overfueled. There we go. Now when the choke is open, it's open. The next issue we have to deal with, there should be a little torsion spring on here that holds this choke in the open position, but it's it's the, the one tail is broken off it, so I can't get it hooked back up. You'll see here what I mean. See on the, on the Ford carburetor, the spring forces the choke open. So I've already figured out what we're gonna do about that. I'll uh, show you once I get it installed on the tractor. So you can see here, we've got uh, a Ford choke rod. I found a little knob for it. I had to shorten it and straighten it out. But it's there and it, and it does the job. So now we need some kind of a return spring to keep the choke from hanging up. Now that I've got all this stuff, I think, sorted out, I can put the carburetor back on. I have previously had my fingers inside this carburetor and I don't think there's really anything wrong in there. So we'll just button this up. Now we can put on our new choke rod that we made. Nice and straight. And it just goes on, just like it goes would go on a Ford with the ball. Oops, there's that left hand of mine again. There we go. And now what I've done, I, you see this little eyelet we brazed onto there? Because the, like I told you yesterday, the, the little torsion spring on there is broken. Unfortunately, not much we can do about that. But what we've got here, I welded that little washer on there and we just clip that to the oil pressure line and that'll keep our choke open when we don't want it open or when we don't want it closed. And I got this little knob, it's off of something that just goes on with a set screw. Not exactly a concourse perfect, but it'll do. 
Well, we'll see what happens. If memory serves me uh, when I was trying to crank on this before the battery was dead, but um, let's see what happens and we'll go from there. can't keep the thing running long enough for me to get off the seat to go tune on the carburetor. So I'm going to do some basic adjustments on the carburetor and we'll uh, try again. Anytime with these little Marvel carburetors that you're not too sure where you're at, you just turn the idle screw all the way in like that and back it out a turn and a half. So one, two, three. That was pretty much where it needed to be. And this is your power screw. You turn that in gently till it bottoms, and the same thing, turn it back out uh, somewhere between one turn and a turn and a half. Oh, that, yeah, that's kind of rich. One and a quarter, we'll put it. Now let's see if we can get this thing cranked back up again. The, I'm kind of guessing, even if we do have this running a little bit better now, the combustion chambers and the spark plugs are so fouled up with carbon and fuel, it might take a little bit to clear it out. Or there's still something wrong with it. Let's see if we can keep it running long enough this time to find out. I pulled the plugs out of it and you can see they're all sooty. Uh, before I get too further, we're just going to quickly do a compression test and see if we're up against anything uh, untoward here. You can see here from the numbers the compression is pretty good. Um, so I'm going to take the carburetor back off, open it up, blow it all out, make sure there's not a piece of junk uh, plugging an air passage or something in there somewhere. And we'll try it again. Everything's nice and clean inside the carburetor. I, uh, I blew everything out. The float setting is pretty good. So I'll put this back together. And bark up another tree, I guess. Now we've got it running. And I just kind of went down and did like a cylinder cutout. So you can hear the difference. When I pull number one off, the yeah, head starts to really stutter, and then it picks up when I put it back on. And these two do the same, but when I take off number two, Nothing happens. So this, you can see, it's sparking. But it's not doing anything. So first of all, we got a, something going on in number two cylinder. Let's try just throwing another plug in there or swapping it to number one and see if we can make the problem move to number one. So let's see now, we'll pull this wire off number two, see that, now it picks right back up, now we'll pull it off number one, okay. our spark plug is dead. Now that I've got it running a little bit better, something I want to deal with that's probably not helping it, um, maintain a, it, its set speed is you can see here that 
the the governor is allowed to flop all over the place because the the friction disc here under there is destroyed. So we're gonna pull this throttle linkage apart and uh, put a new friction disc in it, and that should help a lot with the erratic um, operating speed. Another thing that's also not helping it too much is it's got a horrible exhaust leak. Um, for sure on this number four port, um, it's leaking around here. I'm not sure what I can do about that. The, uh, the port here, the manifold is probably warped. Um, this, I might be able to get a little gasket material in there. You can see it's, you can see it's loose there. I got this rod out and I got it all cleaned up. I made a new friction disc. It's just a piece of cork. I cleaned up the spot on the dash that rubs against. So we'll go now and put it back together. I think um, Gord said when he got this tractor, there was a lot of parts and stuff missing from it. And uh, so we're just kind of uh, using our imagination sort of as we do some of this stuff. Some of this throttle linkage is a little interesting looking, but uh, we'll do our best to make it work. Um, I don't know if you could see it, but this bell crank uh, slides over this shaft and it's held on with this U-bolt. So I did mark it before I took it apart, so I know I get it back on in the, in the right position. So we can go ahead and tighten this up now. You can see here we've got this spring compressed by pushing this along a tightening clamp. And now our throttle stays where we put it. That should be a big help. Now I'm uh, pursuing this big exhaust leak here. Yeah, so here's the problem is um, this clamp is not holding this pipe tight against the tight against the manifold. Mostly because it was on upside down, I think. I'm not sure. Let's try. Uh, let's try it this way. Yeah, see there? It's just... It's loose. And if that's loose, it's going to leak. We went through uh, Gord's bucket of spare parts looking for a, a better exhaust clamp. Um, so we found one of these. You buy these at TSC, but they're made out of aluminum. And when I tried to tighten it, sorry, Gord. This one here looks like the original one. It was no good. So what we did, if you can see there, it's got those little stoppers to keep you from over tightening it. Well, that's okay when everything's new. But once this thing is years and years and it's kind of been moving around and wearing, yeah, you need a little space. So what I did on this one is I ground off the stoppers and that gave me enough room. I put new bolts in there and this thing is clamped on there tight. So now we're going to crank this thing up again and see how it runs. Well, it's running now. Our big, huge exhaust leak is gone. That's good. It still doesn't run very good, but we're gaining on it. I had it running not too badly, but it had a real surge to it. And anyway, it turns out the governor linkage up in here was all out of adjustment. So I, luckily, there, we can see it better there. All that stuff in there. Luckily, I had the, the right manual for it, so we just followed along the procedure and got that adjusted up. Uh, it still runs kind of funny. It pops and farts, but it it runs. It, it, it can sit there and idle. So I'm going to get on it now and take it outside and run it around a bit and see if I can get it, you know, get the... The insides of it hot and uh, then uh, we'll have to get the air cleaner and all the air pipe and everything all back on it last night after much fiddling around with everything uh, and finding a few little things wrong but no real smoking gun we did manage to get this thing running a little bit better uh, good enough that I could get it out and and drive it around 
but it, it's still not um, not itself. It, it's got very poor throttle response, and it, it doesn't have uh, a lot of power. Like um, I've got a little test out the back there where I run up the the bank for the the barn, and it should be able to go up there. These tractors anyway at at a lower RPM in like in like third gear. Oh, they saw a squirrel. <laughs> Did you guys see a squirrel? <laughs> they just came back from their run. They're all hyped up. Um, so we went through the carburetor. And, and well, you saw that on the Vice. Plus, uh, the last time this tractor was here, I took that carburetor off and put it on one of my Fords. And it, and it worked perfectly. So there's nothing wrong with the carburetor. Gone over the ignition completely. Uh, check everything, uh, like electrically and mechanically. So we tested the condenser, checked the points, set the gap, made sure the, the shaft bushings in the distributor were good. Uh, there's no carbon tracking or cracks in the cap. All the wires check out good. The spark plugs check out good. And it's still just, it's just not, not there. And, and it, the idle is kind of, you can hear it in the idle. It's just not, it's just not happy. So, uh, what I've done now, I've drained the gas out of it. We're going to pop the gas tank off. I'm going to pull the valve cover off. And even though I lashed the valves on this the last thing, last time it was here, I'm going to double check the valve lash. And if that looks okay, we're going to put the remote fuel system on it and fire it up and put a vacuum gauge on it. That'll be our last test. Once we know everything else mechanically is good. And uh, we'll see what the vacuum gauge tells us. The valve cover is off, and here's something else I don't like. Um, you can see all this stuff in here. That's caused by two things, and the two things together compound the problem on this. Uh, number one, this engine does not have a thermostat in it, and number two, it does not have positive crankcase ventilation. As you can see here, all it has is a draft tube, and uh, this works, this is in the airstream of the fan, and theoretically, the air going across here creates a little pull and pulls air through the breather cap, which we'll check and make sure it's not all plugged up with grass and stuff, and evacuates all this moisture and stuff out of the crankcase. But the problem is, um, it's not really all that efficient. The, the, the Ferguson tractors of this same era with the, the standard Vanguard engine in them, the TEA, they actually have positive crankcase ventilation, and you, you don't see this in those engines. Um, and not having a thermostat in it exacer exacerbate. There's your $3 word for today. Exacerbates the problem. So um, I'm going to look into putting a thermostat in this thing for Gord because um, it doesn't look like there's any place here to put one. On a Ferguson, it would be right there. But on a Ford, uh, there's a little inline one that goes here in the rad hose. I'm going to look up in the parts books and see if they say... Um, it should have a thermostat. If not, I guess it's just going to have to be like that. But I, I kind of think it should have a thermostat. Probably an inline one like a Ford. But we'll we'll get to that. That's down the road. Uh, next thing here, we're going to have a look inside the, inside the head. And it looks reasonably okay. You will run into problems with the, the Ferguson's with the uh, uh, Vanguard or the, the British Standard engine in them. They'll start acting funny. And they actually have a, a habit of breaking the valve springs. So you have to check them carefully. But I don't see any broken valve springs in this Continental. Here's a step for the sake of taking out four bolts that I'm going to take before I try lashing these valves. Uh, the, the rockers, uh, you can see them down there. The shaft mounted rockers. So you just take these four bolts and lift the whole assembly out. Now, what we're going to do is check the condition of this cylinder head. So we lay a straight edge across the valves and look what we see. This is bad. Um, these two center exhaust valves have recessed into the head quite a way. Number one isn't much better. Um, number four is hanging in there, but these three are bad. And this, I'll tell you right now, is what's causing our problem trying to get this thing to run right. 
what happens is the exhaust valves, they end up shrouded up in the head uh, when they get recessed like that. That's from the unleaded gas. The leaded gas used to lubricate the valve seats um, so that this wouldn't happen. When they took away the lead, we kind of have to run lead substitute in engines like this that I'm assuming do not have hardened valve seats. Uh, flatheads, most flatheads do have hardened valve seats inserted in them from the factory. And my little 8N Fords, uh, 9Ns and that, you know, 75 and 80 years on, the valve seats are still fine. But this one has been killed by unleaded gas. So the only way to fix this, uh, the cylinder head has to come off and go to the machine shop and have hardened seats put in the exhaust, maybe put in all of them if that's what the machinist um, thinks is the right course of action. But uh, I've, I've, I've gotten away like on the slant six in my Valiant, just putting them in the exhaust. But that is definitely what's causing the problem with this engine. So now I'm going to phone up Gord and uh, see what he wants to do with it. To explain this a little bit better, um, <laughs> oh, you're going to love this. Uh, this is a first for our channel. I'm going to rely on some of my own artwork to uh, demonstrate what's going on. I'll show you it actually when I get the head off because I, I spoke to my friend Gord and he said, yes, take the head off, send it to the machine shop. Uh, this tractor means a lot to me, and I can understand my Ferguson means a lot to me too. So we're going to go ahead and get it fixed up for him. Um, but here, um, if you could see my horrible illustration here, here's normally what a valve, how, how it should sit in the engine. You've got a combination of two angles here, and they create a point, and they, um, that would be the face of the valve there. And these angles contact the face of the valve there. And that's what seals it. So when you lose uh, the lubrication of the lead, or you don't have a hardened seat installed, this is the port, by the way, and this is your exhaust valve. What happens is the valve slowly, slowly, over time, starts to burrow its way into the cylinder head, right? So this is greatly exaggerated, but that's basically what's happening. So what happens now, the valve, you can understand, is down in this tunnel, and it has to open all the way down to here before it can even, even start to flow. So you lose a lot of the lift and a whole bunch of the duration of that cam lobe. And that starts to cause a lot of problems with uh, filling and evacuating the cylinder. And that crucial time um, at the end of the exhaust stroke, the, the overlap period, when the exhaust valve and intake valve are open at the same time, which scavenges the cylinder and, and starts the, the fill process of the incoming air fuel charge. And that's why we cannot get this thing to run right. So we're going to go ahead in the next video, pull the head off, take it over to the machine shop, um, get everything else ready, and then when it comes back, we'll put it back together. There's a couple of other things that I would like to address. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put a thermostat in it. Um, I'm not too sure about this upper hose here. I think I might change that. We'll have a better look at it when we get it off. And uh, we'll go from there. I want to get Gord's tractor back working how it's supposed to. That'll do it for this one. We have found the smoking gun. We've diagnosed the problem. Now we can go ahead and fix it. We'll start on that in the next video. Anyway, until then, I want to thank you for tuning in and continuing to support our channel. And until we meet again, this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long for now.